Powell. Um, Your Honor, the Commonwealth calls Chrysanthemum, played by Julian Come on up. Yeah. Have a seat. Uh, adjust the microphone so we can hear you. Keep your voice up. Uh, Ms. Knapp, please. Can you please state your name for the record and spell it? Chris Anthem, C H R I S A N T H E M U M. Okay, and what is your occupation? I'm a caretaker. Where do you work? Liquid care nursing home. And how long have you been there? Seven years. And what are the things that you do in your job? Um, I work to help elderly people at the nursing home and I help elderly people outside in the, at their <coughs> homes. And do you know Mr. and Mrs. Martin? I do. And how do you know them? I've been that caretaker for the last three years. And how long have you worked? How many times do you go to Wally and Case House? <coughs> Two, three times a week. And what kinds of things do you do specifically to help them? I help get their groceries and I help get their medicine and any other errands they want me to run for. And what were you doing on January 29th, 2008? During the day I was working at the nursing home and uh, I went out and got some groceries for them and I went to their house. And what did you do when you got there? I was bringing in the groceries. Uh, did you notice anything out of the ordinary when you arrived? I did. Um, the door was open, which I found strange because Objection. This witness can testify to his observations, but we don't need his opinions about why it may have been strange for the door to be open. Does Nat want to respond? Okay, I sustain the objection. You could try to rephrase it or you can ask your next question. Go ahead. Um, so, upon, when you knocked on the door, who let you in? I let myself in. The door yeah. was open. Upon entering the house, what did you see? Um, I went through the kitchen and there was stuff all over the place. What room did you first walk into? The kitchen. And what did it look like? There was, it was very disorganized. There was stuff everywhere. Was anyone home? Yes. And who was in the house? Wally and Kate. And where were they? They were in the living room. And where was Mrs. Morte's body? On the living room floor. What did she look like? Uh, she didn't have any physical damage to her, but she was she looked like she was unconscious when I got there. Um, because of your expertise as a caretaker, could you tell if she was deceased or not? Uh, not right away, but after I checked her pulse and everything, I realized that she she died. And what did you do while waiting for 911 to get there? I helped um, Marty with his wounds and put some gauze on and all that, and I tried to help him the best way I could. And what did the rest of the house look like? Um, like the kitchen, the rest of the house was disorganized and pretty messy. Any further questions, Your Honor? Nothing else then? Uh, Ms. Apple, your Thank turn. You. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Anthony. My name is Rose Nuffle. I represent the defendant. You're, you were the caretaker for the Anthony Marti Marchese. Mark. Mark. You were the caretaker for them for several years, right? Correct. Um, they were elderly folks, right? Yes. You helped them out with going to the store, doing day-to-day -day sort of tasks for them. Yes. Um, you also brought their medicine to them, correct? Yes. So they both had medicines that they were taking then. Yes. And you. You picked up Miss Smart's medicines, brought them to her. Do you know whether she was taking any medicine for heart conditions? Not by now. But the two of them were elderly. They needed your help. Uh, you could possibly call them feeble. Yes. Now, when you arrived at their house, um, you said that you went through the kitchen, right? Yes. And. Uh, you realized that there was someone home. Did you see someone first, or did you hear them? I heard them. Okay. And that was Mr. Mart. Correct. Um, so you went into the room that they were in, Mr. and Mrs. Mart. Yes. You um, touched both of their bodies. Yes. At some point, uh, you said you 
check to see if Ms. Mart was um, conscious, alive. You took a pulse? Correct. Um, did you also feel whether her, her heart was beating, touch her chest? I gave her CPR and gave her mouth to mouth, but nothing was working. Okay. Um, you also made physical contact with Mr. Mart's body, correct? Correct. You attempted to take the tape off of his ankles? Correct. And um, to treat his wounds, correct? Correct. So you touched several parts of his body as well? Yes. And um, you stayed in the home for a period of time after you arrived there, correct? Yes. And at some point, Officer I am first arrived at the scene? Yes. And I believe you were in the courtroom. You heard him testify earlier that uh, you assisted him in the home at that time, during yes. that time. Um, now, you're not a professional law enforcement officer, are you? No, I'm not. And uh, you're not trained to work within a secure crime scene, are you? No. And um, you're not trained on how to be in that setting without disturbing evidence, are you? No. But you were there with I am first, assisting him. He was the first responder to the scene, is that correct? Correct. I have no other questions, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Um, any other questions for this witness? Okay, thanks, sir. You can step down. Okay. And it looks like the next. Witness is Mr. Helmick. Who's the attorney? Uh, What's your name? Lucas Cubitt. Oh, and okay. the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Cubitt, you have a And Mr. Cubitt, why don't you introduce your witness in his role, please? Uh, this is Jordan Helmick, who playing the role of Trooper in Dewey Justice. All right. All right. Do you swear from the West Michigan Court that you're not being tried for treason, 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 treason? Can you uh, state your name and spell it for the court record, please? Do we justice? K U S T I C E. Alright. Uh, and how are you employed, Mr. Justice? Uh, Pennsylvania State Police. How long have you been employed there? 11 years. What is your position within the department? Uh, I'm a trooper, but I also help out with the Wayne County Forensic Unit. Uh, can you describe a little about your position? Usually I uh, work, I work at the barracks and I do office work, but if there's a, a crime that may have happened, I'll receive a call where I'll help the, the Wayne County Forensic Unit process the scene. So pretty much you're on the call then? Yes. Do you recall the date of January 29, 2008? Yes. Uh, were you working on this day? I was. Do you recall what shift you were working? Night shift. What hours until the night shift? Quarter midnight. Um, and how did you become involved in this case? I received a call from um, Detective Crooks about a possible homicide at 1313 Martin Berlin. Uh, what happened after you received the call? I then got in my cruiser and uh, when I was at the scene. Uh, what time did you arrive at the scene? 4.45 p.m. Uh, what did you first do when you arrived on the scene? When I first arrived at the scene, Detective Crooks um, debriefed me and uh, let me know about the, the, the crime that had happened and, and then began to process the outside crime scene. <coughs> uh, with processing and outdoor crime scene, is there any certain protocol or procedure that is in place within your department? Yes. Can you explain briefly that protocol to the court? Well, when I first arrived at the crime scene, I like to um, walk around the crime scene with my camera to look at the crime scene. I'll take general photographs of the crime scene. I'll also uh, search for evidence. And I'll also do uh, measurements of the evidence I also uh, do a sketch of the crime scene as well. All right, so you stated that you would begin to take photographs and search the crime scene. How did you begin your search of your outdoor scene? Well, at the beginning, I, as I said before, I take general photographs, but I use a grid 
uh, a grid search. Can you uh, describe a grid search for? If I would uh, do a grid search in this scene, I would start from one side of the room, and I would walk vertical, take a step, walk back, look for evidence, and I would do the same thing horizontally. All right, and during your grid search, did you come across anything out of the ordinary? Yes, I did. I first uh, discovered a footprint. All right, and when you discovered this footprint, what steps did you take? I then called Mikey Swish, who's a footprint expert on analysis, um, analyst, excuse me, and I called him. So you handed over the processing of the footprint to Mr. Swish then? I did. Did you stay with Mr. Swish as he processed the footprint? Yes, I did. Uh, what happened after Mr. Swish was done with his duties at the footprint? I then uh, began to uh, locate more evidence. Uh, did anyone accompany you while you conducted your search for more evidence? Um, Mikey Swish was there by. Okay. So, what happened next? I began to search for more evidence and then I ended up finding a uh, camel car cigarette butt. Alright, I would like to have a piece of evidence for the right identification. Okay, go ahead. This is exhibit seven. First the defense. Sure, go ahead. Mr. Freeman, congratulations on your promotion. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Very cold over on this side of the room. <laughs> Your Honor, I've joked with him, uh, Mr. Friedman, who you were not introduced to unless you know him some other way, is the assistant district attorney here in Greene County, and so my reference was the fact that he had switched sides. He's normally a prosecutor, and uh, I see him frequently in my court. And your question was, may you approach? And your answer is yes. Uh, Trooper Justice, do you recognize? Uh, piece of evidence that I've handed to you? Yes, I do. Uh, what is it? This is the cigarette butt that I found at the crime scene 1313 Martin Lane. So you have seen this piece of evidence before? I have. And is it in the same condition that it was as the day you collected it? Yes, it is. Then how can you authenticate that? Uh, because this is uh, my handwriting ah. and this evidence tag that I put on the evidence and this is the envelope and uh, no one else had access to this. Uh, the Commonwealth would like to make a motion to process exhibit number seven, I believe, into evidence. Sir, yeah, any objection? No, no. All right, so no objection, objection and it'll be admitted. Trooper Justice, you did state that you have seen this piece of evidence before. Yes, sir. And this is the same cigarette that you <coughs> collected at the scene. Yes. Uh, what did you do with the piece of evidence after you left the scene? Uh, once I collected this piece of evidence, I put it in my evidence bag that was at the crime scene. And when you left the crime scene, what happened next with the piece uh, of evidence? When I left the crime scene, that it was over at 9 o'clock p.m., I went to the Wayne County Crime Lab where I gave that evidence to um, just in case. Uh, I believe it was a forensic serologist, and I guess he processed the same blood. I'd like to recall your attention back to your position at the crime scene during your search. Um, as you continued your search after collecting the cigarette butt as evidence, what happened next? I began to search for more evidence. Did you take any steps or actions before continuing your search? Yes, I did. I did take off my gloves that I used to uh, pick up the cigarette butt, and I changed my gloves. Uh, what purpose would you change your gloves? Um, so evidence doesn't get cross-contaminated. Right, so you applied a new pair of gloves before searching? I did, sir. Right, as you continued your search, uh, can you explain to what happened after? Um, I then later found a Walmart receipt. Right, Your Honor, I'd like to mark the next exhibit for identification purposes. We'll have Clark, uh, sorry, Clark mark that. Clark mark that. I think that's exhibit eight, right? Yes. Okay. And if you want to show it to the defense first, maybe there's no objection. Objection. Okay. Okay. Jamie, approach if you'd like. Maybe this 
Trooper Justice, the envelope that I just handed you, do you, uh, do you recognize this envelope? Yes, I do. And where do you recognize it from? From the crime scene. And what is the contents of this envelope? Um, assuming it's a Walmart receipt, may I put a glove on so I can pick this up? It's up to, sure, there's no, there's no problem with that. Uh, while you're doing that, Mr. Justice, um, the, you know, I'll let you take that first or send that question. This was the Walmart receipt that I found at the crime scene of 1313 Mockingbird Lane. And is this piece of evidence in the same condition as it was the night that you collected it? Yes, it is. And how can you tell? Because there's no other uh, wrinkles or no other um, things that's been uh, made to it since I processed this. Uh, the Commonwealth News can have exhibit number 8, I believe, placed in evidence. No objection. No objection. Uh, uh, there's no objection, so the same as it can be. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Trooper Justice, uh, can you read to the court, and I understand that, when you collected uh, this piece of evidence, the Walmart receipt you stated, what mindset or what inclines you to take this as evidence? Well, I felt like this cigarette butt could have been uh, serving somebody to uh, this scene, the 1313 Mockingbird Lane. So why did you collect the Walmart receipt that are we talking about now? Um, because it had items uh, that could have been used inside. The Can you reaction to uh, speculation? Uh, could have been used inside. Excuse me, you want to sign? Uh, I'd just like to rescind that question and the statement and continue to ask the questions. Okay. Is there no reason to object to withdraw the question then? We'll ask the jury to disregard the last answer. Okay, Mr. Skip, you go ahead, please. Trooper Justice, can you read for the court and the juries uh, so they know what is on the Walmart receipt that you collected, the items? Objection. The uh, item speaks for itself. Overruled. Go ahead. You may, you may answer the question. Okay. Um, thank you. One pack of Camel Crush cigarettes, um, nylon rope, duct tape, and Bar M. Franks. I'm assuming that's hot dogs. What is it? Bar M. Franks. Can you ask the witness to speak off of that? Yeah. Okay. And that's everything. All right. Can you read? Uh, the date and time printed on that receipt for the court? January 29, 2008 at 11.32 p.m. And you stated there was a Camel Crush cigarette purchase on this Walmart receipt? Yes. And the cigarette that you collected earlier in the crime scene was a Camel Crush cigarette? Yes. All right. After collecting the Walmart receipt at the scene, what did you do next? After collecting the Walmart receipt, um, I processed it and put it in the evidence uh, bag with the other evidence I collected. And when you left the scene, what happened to your evidence that was in your evidence bag? I took it to the Wayne County Crime Lab where it was later um, processed. Did you have any documentation of the evidence you collected? I did. I uh, recorded every piece of evidence in there. All right. Uh, I'd like to mark one more item of evidence. Uh, refer to exhibit number The first time I've seen this, Your Honor. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
first witness. Sure. Trooper Justice, do you uh, recognize this document? Yes, I do. And what is it? This is the evidence control log that I use at the crime scene. And how do you know that it's yours? It has my handwriting and... Yes, it has my handwriting on this. All right. Uh, Commonwealth moves to enter exhibit number nine into evidence. Well, there's a couple of problems. I'm not sure what it says, and I'm not sure that the jury knows what it is. Mr. Friedman, do you have an objection to... I guess this is basically the property record. Is that what it is you're trying to... Yes. Is it the property record? This is, uh, what record. With this is a record of his evidence that was collected. Just okay. Mr. Friedman, objection? Uh, he's testified to what he did with the evidence. I think this is nothing more than uh, cumulative hearsay. Uh, court tends to agree. I'll, um, I'll sustain your objection. We're not going to allow the, the record to be admitted, but he's already testified to that. All right? Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what time did you leave the crime scene? 9 o'clock p.m. And what did you do after you left the crime scene? Uh, as I said before, I took um, both pieces of evidence to the Wayne County Crime Lab. And after the evidence was returned from the crime lab, what was done with it? Um, later on, on the day of February 14th, I received a call about the evidence and I later on picked it up and, from the crime scene and took it back to the station where I put it in an evidence locker right. at the barracks. No further questions. And thank you. And Mr. Free. Thank you. What cigarette butt was this? It was a camel crush cigarette butt. A uh, uh, camel? Camel crush. A camel crush. Yes. Um, you, uh, in your report, you make sure to uh, write identifying marks of various pieces of evidence. Is that yes. correct? Um, do you have a copy of your report with you? No, I do not. Okay. I'm going to show you a document, and uh, pardon my scribbles, does that look like your uh, report? Yes. And can you show me in your report where it says a camel crush cigarette butt? I sent a revised copy of the, uh, the uh, report. You sent a revised copy of the report. Yes. When did you revise it? Um, Shortly after I did that one. So shortly after you did this one, you, when did you type this report? After the crime scene. At the crime scene? No, after the crime after scene. After the crime scene. And it was after you, uh, so it was after you prepared this that you said, oh, you know what? That cigarette butt that I found at the scene was a camel cigarette butt, right? Yes. You didn't know that when you wrote this report? I did. I just did not write it in there. Okay. Uh, what else did you revise in your second report that we don't have a copy of? You should have a copy of the second report if you'd like to see it. Sure, it may help the defense. I think all pieces of uh, police procedure would help the defense, Your Honor. How many other people trampled this scene before you arrived? I object to that. Objection. Thank you. <laughs> Who said that? Objection. The basis of your objection? Other than you were prompted? <laughs> um, he's asking for an opinion. Uh, oh. How many other people trampled this scene before you arrived? Um, the lead detective. Well, the outside crime scene, I'm not sure about. Okay. That's when I received. Um. <coughs> Where is the cigarette found, or the cigarette butt found? Uh, it was found in the grass. That's where I located it, near the steps of the entrance. It was found in the grass near the steps. Yes. Where was the Walmart receipt found? Uh, in the grass, too, near the steps. Okay. There's uh, a picture, there's photographs that I took. You didn't mention in either of these reports that uh, what was contained in the Walmart receipt, is that correct? The items that were contained on that receipt, is that correct? Yes. Why not? I really didn't uh, observe the Walmart receipt once I, uh, I did, but I just, I guess, failure to read my report. Okay. Do you normally make reports that you have to revise to add important identifying details and 
other things that you don't put in your reports? Do you often write reports that way? No, I don't. Okay. So this is, uh, why is this case uh, so different from your normal thing where there's stuff missing and later corrected and stuff added and other stuff not added? Why was, is this case different? It was only about a couple of minutes after that, but I don't know, it was a mistake from my part. Okay. Uh, you took the uh, items directly to the crime lab after you left uh, 1313 Mockingbird Lane? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, you said that the cigarette butt, you knew that it was the same one that you found because it, uh, no one else had access to it. That's not actually correct, is that right? I mean, after I gave it to the, uh, the crime lab, um, other people had access to it, obviously. Right. You don't know who all had access to it there. Um, just in case, that's why I gave it to, so I left it with him. So. It was analyzed at the crime lab? Analyzed at the crime lab? Yes. Yes. And do so you know if anybody at the crime lab smokes Camel Crush cigarettes? I have no idea. It's possible, though. It is possible. Camel Crush is a fairly famous brand of cigarettes. Yes. You also said you did a sketch of the scene? Yes. When did you do that? At the crime scene. <coughs> and what did you sketch? Um, I sketched the surroundings of the house and I sketched the evidence that I collected. And its relation to the house? Yes. And what time was on, you, what time was on the receipt? Um, I guess. Yeah, I think you said 11.32 p.m. Does that sound right? If that's what I said, I'm not familiar with Okay. 11.32 p.m. and you arrived at the scene at 4.45 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Nothing further. Excuse me. Trooper Justice, uh, your revised report, when you guys, as troopers with the police department, when you write reports, do you have a fellow officer or an officer in ranking above you proofread your reports? Yes. Uh, with this current report, did you have somebody read it, reread it? Um, I, I believe I, uh, after I finished writing the report, um, I gave it to uh, my captain, but obviously, um, I don't know if you read it right then and there, but I just laid on the stuff. And is it protocol with your, within your department that, uh, to add amendments, per se, to your reports that need be? Yes. Nothing else? Okay, thanks, sir. You may step down. And the witness schedule that would be Dean Bosby. Ms. Huston, are you up again? Yes. Okay, and you're your witness again? Yes. Are you missing class? Yeah. As we shift around, let's um, let's try to keep some either to equip it, keep some kind of order, so we can keep sort of racking on. All right, we're gonna come over here and have you sworn in, please. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm you have managed to give the court that you now make charge for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you guys? Okay. Okay. Then, Ms. Tustin, would you introduce your her uh, as person and also her character, please? Yes. This is Dina McCluskey, enroll of CSI, um, I'm Dusty Prince. Okay, have a seat, please, and just move that microphone, ma'am, so we can hear you. And then, ask you both to keep your voice up. Okay, go ahead, please. Please introduce, please introduce yourself to the court and spell your last name. Dusty Print, P R I N T V. What is your occupation? I'm a crime scene investigator. And where are you employed? The Lee County Forensic Unit. For how many years? About six and a half. And what do you do there? I process crime scenes. I collect and document evidence. Can you explain what processing is? It is the collection, documentation, and preservation of evidence, kind of like what you would see on CSI or NCIS. What is your academic background? I have a Bachelor's of Science in Forensic Chemistry from Leesburg University. Approximately how many cases have you been called to work on? Probably around 300. 
Have you ever called to testify before? Yes, I have. And how many times have you been called to testify? Probably around 15. How are you involved in this case? I was with a crime scene investigator. On January 29, 2008, what time did you arrive at 1313 Mockingbird Lane? 4.45 p.m. Did you talk to anyone when you got there? Yes, I met with Officer First, um, Detective Crooks, and Trooper Do Justice. Oh. <clears throat> and then what did you do? Uh, I was briefed over the scene, and me and Trooper Justice decided to process the scene. He decided to process outside while I processed the inside. Upon entering, what did you do? I looked around the scene, and then I began taking overview photographs of the overall scene. Did you sign in when you entered the scene? Yes, I did. I signed in with Officer First. So then how did you process the scene? I took photographs, and then I looked for evidence, and then marked them with evidence markers, and then took individual close-up photographs of each piece of evidence that I found. And recorded them on my evidence control log after I bagged and tagged them with my initials and date. Are you familiar with the scene as it looked on January 29, 2008? Yes, I am. Your Honor, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania would like to mark this as exhibit um, for our 10 for identification. Just tell me what the exhibit okay. reports to be. A contact sheet. Photographs? Okay. okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, someone would serve as clerk then. It may be number nine. Is it ten? Okay. Ten. Okay. And you want to show that if you would to the defense, Mr. Jess? Okay. And if you'd like, you could approach it. Okay. I show you what has been marked as Exhibit 10. Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. Can you describe the exhibit? It's a contact sheet of photographs I took at the crime scene. Did you take these photographs? Yes. And Mr. Prince, does Exhibit 10 fairly and accurately show the scene at 1313 Mockingbird Lane as it appeared on January 29, 2008? Yes, it does. Your Honor, at this time we offer Exhibit 10 into evidence. Move for its admission, Mr. No objection. No objection. Okay, the same as admitted then. Go ahead, please. Your Honor, I'd like to mark this as Exhibit 11 for identification. Okay, go ahead. You, Mr. Clark. Do you have other exhibits that, that you intend to introduce through this witness? Yes. If you would, you may, you may as well just give them all to her. She can mark those. And then as they mark, uh, we can be sure that we can ask them. Okay? One more thing, Thank you. 
Mr. Prince, I'm handing you an exhibit, 12 for identification. Do you recognize it? Um, am I allowed to open it? Yeah. Well, her question was, did she, did she open it? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I recognize this one. Can you describe what it is? It is the letter opener that I collected from the scene. Um, how do you know that it was found? That was the one that was found at the scene. Um, because this is my signature on the other tag and it was sealed. Can you explain how you collected it? I took photographs of it in its original position and then I marked it with evidence marker and then I collected it into a paper envelope and then tagged it with my signature on the date, and then recorded it onto my evidence control log. What did you do with it after you collected it? I put it into my evidence bag at the scene, and then took it to the crime lab after I left for analysis. Who did you give it to at the crime lab? Uh, Haywood and Matcham for print analysis. Did you receive it back from analysis? Yes, I did. What did you do with it after you received it? I place it into my evidence box. Has it been removed from then until now? No. Does Exhibit 12 look the same as it did when you collected it on January 29, 2008? Um, I have some fingerprint dust from analysis, but other than that, yes. Um, I'd like to admit that into evidence. Okay. And is there just an objection to the Exhibit is offered. No, okay. no objection, and the same is admitted. Okay, go ahead. Ms. Huston, please. Can you explain where that exhibit was located in relation to the crime scene? Um, it was on the floor across from the victim seated in the chair, which we now know is Kmart. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what, number 13? Yes. That's fine. Okay. Did we, um... Exhibit number 13 is admitted. Explain where you collected it, from where you collected it. 
It was lying on the floor next to the body of the pain. Um, how did you collect that? I took photographs of it and marked it with an evidence tag and a placement of paper envelope and tagged it with my signature and the deed. What did you do with it after you collected it? I put them into my evidence bag and then uh, I recorded it onto my evidence control box. Um, what did you do next? Um, you, you mean with the evidence? Yes. Um, after I left the scene, I took it to the crime lab for analysis. <coughs> Who did you give it to at the crime lab? Um, hey, would you match them for print analysis? And did you receive it back from analysis? Yes, I did. What did you do with it after you received it? I put it into the evidence vault. And has it been removed from the until now? No, it has not. Your Honor, at this time we offer Exhibit 14 for evidence. No objection. Okay, number 14 then. Uh, there being no objection, the same as admitted. I'm sure you have been marked as Exhibit 15. Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. Can you describe the exhibit to the jury? Um, it's a collection of photographs I took of the body at the scene. Um, does this exhibit fairly and accurately portray the victim at the scene at 1313 Mockingbird Lane as it appeared on January 29, 2008? Yes, it does. I'd like to offer that into evidence. I'm going to object to that as unduly inflammatory, Your Honor. There are already smaller pictures of it. We've heard a lot of testimony about the fact that um, poor Mrs. Mark uh, was um, found in a chair and that her arms and legs were duct taped. Um, I don't see any reason to have big 8 by 10 photos then passed out to the jury, other than to inflame them. You understand his objection and his testimony? Do you want to respond to that? You understand? He may be relevant, but what he's saying is, is that. It just makes the client look really bad. Is that right for you? Well, I'm just trying to explain where the, oh, for her to testify as to where the body was placed. So you, you agree that it's prejudicial more than probative? No. You want to argue that it should be admitted? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I'd just like to, for her to show us where it was placed at the scene so she could um, <coughs> I was trauma. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Just because you can't think of it right away doesn't mean you don't have the answer. May I have a second, Your sure. Honor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that was admitted, and uh, if you can remember where you are, go ahead and 
Did you process the body? No, I do not. Can you explain that? Um, the coroner arrived and I observed the coroner as they took the body back to the lab to be examined. And what time was that? The coroner arrived at 7 and they took the body from the scene around 7.45 p.m. Okay. <coughs> um, um, Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Prince, I handed you Exhibit 16 for identification. Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. What is it? It's my evidence control log from the team. What is an evidence control log? It's just a documentation of each piece of evidence that I collected with the location of where it was found in the room and then um, the signature of the person who found it, which in this case is mine. What did you do with the exhibit when you left the scene? Uh, I just went into my evidence vault along with the rest of my documents. Has it been taken out of there until now? No, it's not. Does this document fairly and accurately portray um, your evidence as it appeared on January 29, 2008? Yes, it does. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer that into a group. I'll object to that, Your Honor, on the same basis that we used to object to the same piece of evidence a few minutes ago. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. We'll uh, sustain your objection. Um, and so, uh, jury can consider, certainly, how the evidence was handled, but uh, you won't see written uh, documentation that was mentioned. Okay, and in, any other questions? Yes, sir. Did you sign out when you left the scene? Yes, I did. I signed out with Officer First. And what time did you leave the scene? 9 p.m. No further questions, Your Honor. No other questions? Okay. Um, is Mr. Jess? Yes. Cross? Thank you. I believe you testified in direct examination that uh, the body, you sent the body letter opener to uh, uh, Mr. Matcham lab yes. and then it came back with some dusted for some fingerprints yes um, but you never received a report back from mr matcham did you no you never received a report back from him on the duct tape either did you no so you don't know if it was fully analyzed or not do you no i do not you have no idea if after spending all this time collecting evidence and photographing the evidence and wearing gloves again wearing gloves in court and documenting all this that you dropped the evidence off at the lab to mr matcham and you have no idea if he even looked at it no i do not you would, you'd agree that those are pretty significant pieces of evidence in this case. Yes, I would. And to refuse or fail to analyze those for fingerprints or DNA uh, is, a, is a, a big uh, error on the part of the police, isn't it? Yes, it would. Especially when we're talking about a homicide case. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, well, I have one last question. You never found a screwdriver at the house, did you? No. At the scene? Okay. But you did speak to Mr. F to Officer first. Yes. And he told you there was a screwdriver there? No, he did not tell me. He didn't. What did he tell you was that? He just gave us an overview of the case and he told us there had been a victim who was assaulted and that there was a victim um, taped to a chair and that it just needed to go in and process. Okay. He never said anything about a screwdriver? No. And you didn't find a screwdriver? Thank you. Any other questions? No. Nope. <coughs> you said no, right? Right. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, you may step down. And um, next schedule one witness is Lana Marks, I think. Is that right? No? Oh, Don. Don and Lana. Okay. And uh, prosecutor will be what? Excuse me. Uh, why don't you introduce um, his real person and character, if you would, and then we'll have him sworn. This is Dominic Morgan, playing the role of Trooper Cha Cha Chang. Okay. Go ahead.
Do you swear for a testimony to give the court that you now be tried to be true, more true, more true, more true, more true, more true, Just the microphone until we can hear you. And uh, when you're ready, Mr. Uh, Lucas, you're a witness this morning. Your Honor, um, this is Trooper Cha Cha Ching, correct? Yes. Uh, may we pretend to approach the bench? Yes. So this will be a, as if this were a sidebar. It, you know, you guys, mm -hmm. I mean, this really is very close to what we would do in trial. The only difference would be these guys would come up here and sort of huddle around, and then we would actually try to have a private conversation outside of your hearing. So that's what she's asked to do, and that's what we're going to do. Go ahead, please. Your Honor, this, uh, I would ask for an um, offer of proof for this witness. Okay, let's start there. You know what she means? We want to know what, why are you calling this witness? That's an offer of proof. So tell us that. Uh, this witness was being called to testify that he obtained financial records, uh, initially observed them, uh, after being ordered to by Detective Crooks after the arrest of Harry Knuckles, and then further send them on to Detective Crooks to be sent for analysis. And I'd ask uh, for the relevance of that evidence. Okay. Um, the relevant, uh, the reason why we were sent for the financial records was the amount of money that was stolen from the Mort residence. And well, okay, how much was stolen? What is it that you allege was stolen? I am not sure at this time. Okay. So somewhere, let's say there the was financial money stolen. records will show them out, and if we're not So that's the basis of my objection, Your Honor. There's been no evidence offered that any money was stolen, so this assumes facts not in evidence. It sort of makes sense. But part of your case is that this was a successful was a robbery, robbery, right? Burglary and everything. All right, so then money was stolen from the Mark residence and during the commission of the crime, as you heard in the opening statement. Right, so now are you going to show that... Well, let's put it this way. Do you believe that this witness... Is, this wit, do you believe that you have financial records that show a relevant amount of... of money that was deposited or moved in Mr. Knuckles' account um, close enough in time and in amount that you think it's relevant to the fact that Knuckles participated in this burglary robbery. Is that right, Chair? Yes, I do. And also the testimony from the prelim preliminary hearing that was not entered from Mr. Mark, I believe. <laughs> That's how we come to understand the money was stolen from the residence. Okay, the simple, um, we'll assume that you have a little more information than you actually have, and I understand your objection, so we'll um, accept their offer of proof, and we'll permit this witness to testify. Okay, so then we'll be back on the record, and you folks can go ahead and have a seat or wherever you're comfortable, Mr. Cubic, <coughs> you're there, and the simple, we'll send you back. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, the reason that we want to have this kind of conversation outside of the jury is because they're arguing about whether you should hear it at all. So we can't have... Uh, she couldn't go up and say, you know, mention money and talk, or talk about a cli her client's record that he may or may not have if she's trying to keep it out. So there's a lot of things that we hear first, and because of the rules of evidence, which is what you're studying, we decide, we as a judge or as advocates try to get things in front of you um, consistent with the rules that you've learned. So go ahead, please. Uh, can you state your name and spell it for the court record, please? Super Cha Cha Ching, C H I N G. How are you employed? Uh, I am a uh, Pennsylvania State Policeman and I am a part of the investigative unit. And how long have you employed there? 17 years. And when you stated your position was what within the department? Uh, Pennsylvania State Policeman and I am in the investigative unit. Can you describe a little bit about your position? Um, just answer calls that are brought in, uh, and when I'm, in, when I'm brought in to investigate, um, just find, find any uh, evidence that is worthy. Trooper, how were you, or how did you become involved in this case? Uh, I was asked by Detective Crooks to further an investigation on Harry Knuckles' financial records. And what steps did you take to obtain these records? Uh, I obtained a search warrant. I'd like to work the bank records. Identification. Okay, do you have you seen those at all? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, 
Um, don't worry about not opening the envelope. Just go ahead and open that up. You can mark it, and then let's show it to the defense. And, um, and that will... Peter and Peter, maybe that's the other one. Yeah. <coughs> All right, then, Mr. Yeah. Kubik, you may proceed. May I approach? Yes, sir. Drew Chang, after you've looked over what I just handed you, do you recognize these documents? Yes. Uh, can you describe to the court what they are? Uh, these are the bank statements. Uh, Harry Knuckles. And are they in the same condition they were whenever you obtained them from the bank? Yes, they are. Which bank did you obtain them from? PNC Bank. Uh, Commonwealth News to have exhibit number, what number is it? 617. Place in the evidence. Your Honor, I object to this witness offering this into evidence. Uh, I don't think he's a proper person to authenticate these records as they've come from Thank you, Mr. Do you agree, Mr. Cooper? No. Okay. Do you, so if you disagree, is there a rule of evidence that might suggest that there's a reason to admit? I think, Your Honor, we have a stipulation. We have a stipulation oh, that, that uh, we would have to make for the bank that would have testified that they were authentic. So that was our list of stipulations. All right, so let's assume that that the records are authentic, then is there, does the defense remove its objection then? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, good. Then um, if there's no objection, then the documents will be admitted. Okay. Any, any other questions? Oh, yes. Okay, go ahead, please. Trooper Chang, um, when you were observing these records, what did you observe about Mr. Knuckles' uh, finances? Um, I observed that Mr. Knuckles had a consistent cash flow um, with the beginning balance and ending balance throughout his financial records of the year of 2007, month to month. Uh, the records that you obtained, uh, what dates does it encompass? Uh, start date, beginning date, is it good? Um, the start date would be the beginning of 2007, which is January 1st, and the ending would be uh, 229.08. And these are monthly? Yeah, I object to hearsay in that uh, these are coming from a document, not from the witness's own knowledge. The witness uh, obtained this knowledge from his investigation upon this document. So I'm asking him to testify to what he investigated, not just what's on the paper. So if somebody told him something, would that be all right? What's that again? If somebody told him something, is he allowed to repeat it before? No, but this was discovered so, upon him, his investigation. So he read something, or somebody wrote a note, is he allowed to re read that in court? No, but these are official bank documents. Okay. It's not a note that somebody just wrote in. No, so you're saying it's not hearsay. Correct. Right. It is hearsay, Your Honor. These are... Uh, facts that are being offered for the truth of the matter asserted as to the amount of money in the account. Um, these are out of court statements made by officials at PNC Bank, and so um, they are by definition hearsay. Well, I think the stipulation allows them to come in, so the hearsay objection is primarily as, I think, as to the records. So we'll allow him to um, read what's stated in the document. So we'll allow him to cross. I think right. it may fall into an exception. I think it may. Be. What exception do you think it may fall into? We were all just the three of us talking about this. Possibly business records. That would be. That would come to the court's mind as well. Have you heard of that one? Yes. Do you think it may be a business records exception? I do believe it. Right. Then based on that, we'll allow the uh, evidence to come. Okay, and if you would call, go ahead and ask your next question, please. Uh, as you stated, uh, he had a, or er, said that. Um, during your investigation of the records, did you observe anything outside the range of his normal? Yes, I did. Uh, what did you observe? On February, I mean on January 30th, 2008, 
I found a significant amount of money deposited. And what would you describe as the significant amount deposited? Um, $38,000. And what type of deposit was this? A cash deposit. Throughout the length of your investigation on these documents, had Mr. Knuckles ever deposited an amount remotely as large as this? No, he has not. Did you notify anybody about your findings of this exceedingly large amount of money? Yes, I did. Who did you notify? Detective Crooks. And what did you do next? Uh, Detective Crooks asked me to hand the documents over to him, and I, as I did. No further questions. Okay. Ms. Seth, questions? Thank you, Adam. Trooper Cha Cha Ching, you um, prepared a investigative report in preparation for testimony today, is that correct? Yes, I did. Um, and in that report, you state that the beginning and ending amounts never reached over $400 um, for each month in 2007, which is why you found it suspicious that this amount was so high, is that right? Correct. Um, now, you would agree that this is a type of account that a person could deposit and withdraw from with any type of regularity? Correct. So he could have been depositing paychecks every month? Correct. Uh, possibly in the second week of the month if he gets paid regularly? Correct. And that would mean that the amount would be the highest in the middle of the month and lower at the end of the month, isn't that right? It depends on what when he's paid. Okay. As I as I went through the documents I found that there is a consistent uh, deposit of so many weeks and uh, of the month and the money that was deposited on February, I mean on January 30th was nowhere near close to any of those deposits. Okay. So the deposit on that date was um, higher than those other deposits, is that yes. right? Um, you don't know what Mr. Knuckles did for a living, do you? No, I do not. And you don't know how much he was paid? No. So, you don't know whether he may have gotten a new job? Not in my knowledge. All you know is that the numbers in his bank account went up and down? Correct. And there could be any number of reasons for that to have happened? Correct. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the prosecution? Ms. Witness? Can I take one moment, please? Sure. Trooper Ching, when Detective Crooks gave you the assignment to review the financial records, that was the only assignment and directions he had given you? Yes, correct. So you were just supposed to, what, what exactly were you going to do? Just investigate them? Uh, my assignment was just to investigate the documents and I proceeded to do that. So you weren't supposed to find reasoning? just look for suspicious activity or anything to that such? Yes. And when you found something, you were to hand it off to somebody else? Well, yes, the Detective Crooks told me to notify him. Somebody more qualified to research his records? Yes. No further questions? No other questions, Ryan. Okay, thank you. Sir, you may sit down. And next week, take a long mark. Prosecutor, Mr. Crusoe? Yes, sir. And I want to introduce the character of the individual, please. Uh, the prosecution calls uh, Peter N.C. Bank. He's going to be played by Elena Martz. Please. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony to give the court an issue now being charged to be the truth, whole truth, and the truth on the gun? Okay. Have a seat. Uh, watch the yeah. Voice up, etc. And 
and um, Mr. Cruz, that your witness has been sworn. Right. Uh, can you state your name for the court? Peter N. C. Bank, C. A. N. K. All right. And by whom are you employed? Forensic Accountant of Wayne County. All right. What's your position? I'm the owner and the forensic accountant. Okay. What does a forensic accountant do? Um, we apply accounting concepts to legal problems. All right. How long have you been employed there? Eight years. Eight years. And have you had any previous employment in similar capacity? Yes, I worked as an auditor for 10 years at Earth and Young. Have you received any education in the field of forensic accounting? Yes, I have a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Waynesburg University in forensic accounting. I also have an MBA from Waynesburg University in finance. All right. Have you done any teaching on the subject on the subject of forensic accounting? Yes, I've been teaching since um, 2000 um, at Waynesburg University. I teach Introduction to Forensic Accounting and Forensic Accounting. Do you have any certifications in the field? Yes, I'm a certified public accountant, a certified um, internal auditor, and a certified fraud examiner. All right. And have you received any awards for the field of, in, uh, in the field of Forensic Accounting? Yes, I've received the award of National Auditor of the Decade. Um, most ethical CPA in Wayne County and number one accountant in Pennsylvania. All right. And have you ever been selected as an expert witness before? Yes, about 50 to 55 times. Have you ever not qualified as an expert witness? No. And have you ever testified on the defensive side? Yes. All right. Uh, Commonwealth, we'd like to move uh, to motion for Peter N.C. Bank as an expert witness in forensic accounting. A couple questions. Go ahead, please. Now, have you ever uh, testified? Well, let me withdraw that. You'd agree that your testimony here and your opinions surround essentially one deposit over about a 13, 14 month period. Isn't that correct? Yes. And that would be a the deposit that was exponentially higher than all of the other deposits? Yes. Have you ever testified in a similar situation to that as an expert, um, in that you testified about one deposit that was an aberration from all their other deposits? Yes. You have? Yes. How many occasions have you testified to that? Um, I'd say about five. Five times? Yes. And, and in, different, in this jurisdiction or in different jurisdictions? Um, this one and other ones. That's all the questions I have, Your Honor. Any objection to qualifying this witness as an expert? I do, Your Honor. Uh, in spite of those, what I would consider potentially erroneous qualifications in the past of this witness, um, I, we would suggest that it's improper for an expert to be called on this issue. This is essentially the prosecution trying to dress up something that does not require expert testimony. What the offer the prosecution has here is that one deposit that was, what you'll hear is that there was one deposit of $38,000 uh, and that that was exponentially higher than any other deposit my client uh, made. Why an expert is needed to testify as to that uh, is beyond me. That, that is not something, that's something that, for lack of a better phrase, is what it is and doesn't require such type of wind, this type of window dressing. And, and for that reason, it doesn't require a specialized area of knowledge and would object. Mr. Caruso, you want to respond? Is she going to testify to something other than the cash deposit that was made? In she is going to testify to the cash deposit, but she also has relevant experience to explain the cash deposit and potentially why it's um, unusual. And it's, it's relevant to the case. They called her to do research on this the Wayne Police Department. So is she going to testify to more than... Yes, she's going to use her, her uh, accounting techniques to explain it. Okay, so his objection is not so much that she's not an expert, but that it's not it's, necessary. Yeah. So, I'll overrule your objection and you can cover that in your closing or in the comments as well. Alright, Mr. Chris, so go ahead, please. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Peter NC Bank, what were you asked to do for this case? Trooper Cha Cha Chang sent me the financial records of the Harry Knuckles for 14 months from January 2007 until February 2008. All right, and uh, did you review those? Yes, I did. Uh, did you review anything else within those? Um, yes, a currency transaction report, which is filed by a bank, a bank 
for a deposit or withdrawal of over $10,000 in cash. Okay, and uh, what were you looking for specifically in those, in those documents? Um, we were, I looked for anything that was um, seemed out of the ordinary and not um, how Mr. Knuckles generally spend his money or deposits. Okay, well, and what's an example of something that would be out of the ordinary? Um, it would, uh, as for the case of Mr. Knuckles, um, every every check, every deposit was by check except the cash deposit of thirty-eight thousand dollars. That would be considered out of the ordinary because every deposit is check and not with cash. Okay, and um, do you did you prepare anything to help explain the, to the court your findings? Yes, I have a graph. All right, uh, Your Honor, I would like to admit Exhibit eighteen for identification. Uh, I'm not sure you need to admit it. Um, or, uh, you have a, um, you want to use some sort of a demonstrative. I do, so I have this graph here and then I have uh, uh, something from PD. You have something printed. Why don't you show it to Mr. Gorman and see if there's any objection. Okay. And then before you actually put it up, let's see if there is any objection. Mr. Gorman, do you have a chance, have you had a chance to look at the graph? Uh, I have. I, I'd raise the objection for the same reason that Your Honor has already overruled my objection. Okay. Then uh, there being only a half-hearted objection, I'll overrule again. All right. And uh, so you have it marked, and I'm assuming that you're going to ask her if she prepared it. I'm assuming she's going to say yes. Am I right? <coughs> so if you want, then, since there's no objection, if you can, um, if you want to display it so the jury can see it, you can. Then question her from about uh, the chart that was created. Turn to someone who was trained. It doesn't seem to be showing the entire graph. I have some printed copies. We may use some of those too. Can you scroll down? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's not working. Can you make the graph smaller? Do you recognize this graph? Yes. What is it? It is. Um, it represents the ending balance for Harry Knuckles' bank account for the 14 months that I reviewed. All right. Did you prepare it? Yes, I did. And does it accurately accurately reflect the activity in Mr. Knuckles' checking account for the month of January 2007-2008? Yes, for the ending balance. All right. We offer to admit this as evidence. That's what we already did. That's fine. Yeah, it, that's it'll fine. be admitted that. Okay. Yeah, um, Peter Bank, would you mind stepping down and summarizing this graph for the jury? Sure. <coughs> okay. This, um, these, each one of these represent the months. This is January 2007, this is February 2008. Um, all these little, um, bars are the ending balance in money. Um, 
as you can see, all of them are pretty significantly short compared to January. Um, this represents his ending balance in January 2008, which was $38,004. All right. You said you were looking for patterns, correct? Yes. All right. What, uh, what kind of deposits had he been making? Every, every single one besides the one from January 30, 2008 was checked. So they were all checks? Every single one, yes. And what was the highest amount in that check? I believe $500 was the highest check deposited. $500? Yes. And what was the biggest deposit he made? And clearly in January 2008? $38,000 cash. 30 in cash. cash. $38,000 cash. In your professional opinion, the deposit Knuckles made in January was not consistent with his normal patterns and was therefore unusual? Yes. No more, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. If you would, the witness can return to the witness box. And then, uh, Mr. Gordon, please. Uh, do you know on whether that $38,000 was in, if you know, one deposit or more than one deposit? One deposit. And do you know the date of that deposit? January 30th, 2008. And do you know uh, the next month there was, it was back down to... It was a negative balance at the end of February. At the end of February there was a negative balance. Yes. So all the money had been withdrawn. It was all spent, yes. There was a $24,000 withdrawal and a lot of the money was just spent. All right. And, and so there was one deposit on January 30 of 2008, uh, and, and you are saying that that, what is your opinion about why that requires your expert opinion? What, what is your, the conclusion you reach about that deposit? Um, I reached the conclusion that that is an unusual deposit for, the, for Mr. Knuckles' bank account. He um, generally had lower balances, extremely lower balances than that. Um, Do you have any idea whether Mr. Uh, Knuckles had other bank accounts? Um, not that I was, I'm not aware of that. Um, this is the only thing I was sent. You were just sent this information? Yes. Okay, so as far as his, did you ever get any of his tax documents, any tax returns that he filed? No. Okay. And, uh, were you given any other sort of financial information on Mr. Knuckles other than this one bank account and yeah. its statements from January 2007 through February 2008? Nothing else? No. Yeah. And in terms of this one bank account, you don't, you don't have any statements after February 2008 or before January 2007, is that right? No, this was just the scope of the 14 months. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Thank you. May I step down?